welcome back to another video or welcome if you are new here. If you are new, do me a huge favor, give this video a huge thumbs up and subscribe. Today I'm going to share with you this amazing $3 dinner. It's honestly the best $3 dinner that I have ever made and it definitely needs to be made in your kitchen. It takes no time at all. Plus I'm going to share with you a simple easy bread recipe that you can amp this meal up with and show you my homemade veggie broth. So this video is packed. Sit down, buckle up, let's get started. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to prep these garbanzo beans. You can definitely use them in a can if you want to, but I figured I saved four times the amount of money making them myself, but you don't have to if you don't have the time. They're really awesome to prep ahead. I prepped a whole pound of them in my Instant Pot. If you don't have an Instant Pot or a pressure cooker, as I guess mine is, it's not technically an Instant Pot. I always just use that slang because everybody knows what it is. If you don't have a pressure cooker, you can make them in your crock pot or you can make them stovetop. Head over to Pinterest and find a quick recipe. For me, I just rinse them. I check them for rocks really quickly and then I get them in my pressure cooker and it takes 30 minutes, about a 10 minute release, I think is what my pressure cooker does for a bean method and they are perfection every single time. You can also save the aquafaba if you want to, to use it later on in recipes. It freezes really well. And I put six cups of water with my beans in case you want to know. And I always use that method with, with every style of bean that I make and every time it's perfection. But like I said, if you don't want to use a pressure cooker, crock pot, instant pot, you could use garbanzo beans and it would cost you about 58 to 75 cents depending on the beans. These beans were 58 cents per can. The one pound bag I got on sale for a dollar. So I got so much more beans out of it than I would with a can. So it makes it a lot cheaper, but again, it's just based on your time. If you don't have the time to make the beans, if you don't have the ability to make them, grab a can of beans, there's nothing wrong with that. But just giving you options, this meal is a lot cheaper if you make it with the dried beans. So once my beans were 66, I popped them off and they were absolute perfection. They always smell so good. I didn't add any seasonings to these because you're going to have to stop back on Tuesday to see what I do with the rest of these beans. One thing I really, really love about making pressure cooker beans or crock pot beans is I have so many then on hand to use. And then I usually plan my meal plan around it for the week. Like I said, I have more recipes coming on Tuesday. I am using my Dutch oven, but you can just use a regular pan or whatever you want for your stove top and adding about 50 cents worth of an onion. And then I'm using homemade veggie broth, which I will share the recipe here at the end and link it down below to my blog. So that way you have it if you want to keep it. And all I do is add a little bit of veggie broth instead of oil. I started cooking with veggie broth when we were on our debt-free journey just because it was free and I didn't have to buy oil and I just kind of kept up with it. So then I'm going to add to that about 50 cents worth of carrots. I just had some baby carrots sitting in my crisper, so that's what I used. And I will also link this three-in-one blender down below if you need a handy kitchen tool. It's cordless, it's awesome. You charge it and then it literally stays charged for forever and it's so handy. Then you don't have to get out your big food processor or you don't have to chop anything if you don't want to. So then I added the carrots also to the pot and cooked them again with veggie broth. It's just an easy way to saute or steam your veggies. And I just cook them until everything's mildly tender. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once the onion's translucent and the carrots have cooked for about two to four minutes, it's perfect because the carrots are going to have time to cook later on in the recipe. I also added some salt, oregano, and basil. You can add Italian seasoning if you have it. I was completely out, which is shocking. I just use a lot of Italian seasoning in my house and in my cooking. And then, like I said, I just sauteed them probably between three and five minutes total, adding a little extra veggie broth just so the carrots had a little um, little bit of liquid to cook down. This was one of those meals that I threw together last second on a very busy weeknight and I was shocked by the outcome. Honestly, it's one of the best meals that I have made in a long time. It is so delicious, so budget friendly, and I love that there was leftovers. So then to that, once I was satisfied with the cooking method of the veggies, I added two cups of the garbanzo beans. I still have four more cups left, which is crazy. I also added two tablespoons of cornstarch once this started to kind of cook up a little bit, almost when it became a boil, because I wanted to give it a nice thickening method. I am going to add coconut milk as well, and I'll share a secret with you with coconut milk, but adding a little bit of cornstarch really is a secret to this recipe, so it's nice and thick and creamy, instead of just kind of being really brothy. So I added that, stirred it in, and then like I said, I have a secret for you for coconut milk. So I usually get my coconut milk at Trader Joe's. However, recently at the dollar store, I've been finding these little three packs for a dollar, and I found them because 
because someone else on Instagram said that's where they get their coconut milk. And honestly, it's a great price. I put it in the refrigerator. That's why it's so thick and creamy and make it cold. So it's almost like a whipped cream or a heavy cream before adding it to my pot. And I find that it just makes everything so much richer and creamier. And I love adding it in this way. But that with the cornstarch makes this so creamy. I go ahead and stir it up so it's nice and mixed together. And then I added one cup of orzo. You can add any kind of noodle you want. Orzo is a little bit more expensive, especially if you do it gluten-free, but this was really the rock star of this entire meal. And then I popped the lid on and I let it simmer for 10 minutes on low. Because it's a Dutch oven, I feel like it keeps the heat in really, really nice and it cooks everything nice and evenly and fast and so you can cook on a lower heat which I really like. After 10 minutes I went ahead and pulled the lid off and it was absolute perfection. $2.92 on this ginormous meal. It fed us for multiple meals. We had it for dinner and then we had it for lunch the next day and dinner the next night and you can serve it with a nice crusty loaf of bread. You're going to see a bread recipe next and that bread loaf cost roughly 50 cents to make. So here are the leftover garbanzo beans. Like I said, make sure you subscribe so you can see on Tuesday what I make with these. You're not gonna wanna miss it because I have some great recipes coming. As you may know by now, I love making bread and I decided this day to make two loaves to kind of get a jump start on the week ahead. And I can always make more later in the week, but this way it's already pre-made. I kind of had a schedule for the meal plan that I was chatting with you guys about. So I did a nutritional yeast Italian seasoning one. So it was like a cheesy Italian and I just did a regular traditional loaf. The traditional loaf I ended up giving away. <laughs> so I made it ahead to help myself out. But then I was like, you know what? I'm going to gift this loaf of bread. So anyways, I ended up making another one the next day. But hey, I was able to make six loaves of bread with this one thing of flour. Anyways, if you've never made homemade bread, this is the easiest one to start with. Three cups of water, a teaspoon of salt, some seasonings if you want to add it in, a cup and a half of warm water. You mix it together, you let it sit. If you have the quick active yeast, you can let it sit for one hour. It's even better if you let it sit for longer just because that yeast just kind of has time to really rise and really blossom, but it still works out really good. You still have a really crusty, chewy loaf of bread if you let it sit for an hour, so it's completely up to you and your time frame. A lot of times I will make these loaves at night and let them sit overnight if you have a warm house, it will also rise a little faster. With bread making, the biggest thing I like to tell people who've never made bread before, it's really, really easy to follow a recipe, but depending on the climate you live in, that recipe may or may not work out, which I think sometimes scares people because I have people that will tag me over on Instagram and be like, okay, I made your bread, but it was so sticky. And then I just let them know like, hey, you just need a little bit more flour. You might live in a really humid climate I live in a really dry climate, so my bread tends to be a little bit drier. Um, and you just kind of kind of go with trial and error, but you're not going to mess it up. If it's sticky, add a little bit more flour. If it's really, really dry, add a little bit more water. And as you can see, when I add my water, I add a little at a time. And I'll show you here real quick. I didn't even add the cup and a half because I know what my bread's supposed to look like. Um, the crock pot bread I made a couple weeks ago, I added two cups of water because that was the recipe and I just assumed it needed more water because it was going in the crock pot, so it was super, super sticky. But the next time I made it, I made it with a cup and a half and it was fine. So this dough is a little bit drier. Yes, it could have added more water, but again, I know what it should look like. And sometimes when you add seasonings into this dough, it tends to be a little bit drier. And you'll see my rise really isn't that great. My kitchen was kind of chilly this morning. It's just because we don't have any carpet in our downstairs. We do have higher ceilings. And on a chilly morning, our downstairs is sometimes chilly because it's just the way I have my heat set, the preference of my house. You could definitely, like I said, move it to a warmer room if you want a better rise. But my bread turned out perfect. And I think it's really, really important to share with you guys different kinds of weather making bread so you don't see that my bread always looks the same. As you can see, it's a little bit dry. I liked it that way. I knew it was perfect by the texture of it. I let it rest for about an hour, let it rise. 
Like I said, you can do it overnight, six to eight hours, whichever works for you. This bread could not be any easier to make. You go ahead and preheat your oven to 450 degrees, and then you're gonna actually pop your bread pan in. Here, I'll explain it to you. Okay, we're doing two different kinds of breads, and I'm not going to do my Dutch oven because I wanna show a couple different methods. So, into the preheating oven, we're going to put one of these bread pans and one glass baking dish. If you have a Dutch oven, you can go ahead and add the bottom, not the lid, of your Dutch oven into your oven and let that preheat. It makes it so that it gets nice and hot and then the bread doesn't stick. You don't need any additional oils or sprays and you get a nice crispy, crunchy crust, which is perfect for soups and toast and bread and croutons and literally everything. And I don't need my bread. I just kind of fold it like an envelope. I saw that on YouTube once and I absolutely love it. The texture of my bread is Perfect. It may not look like it got a huge rise. It doesn't matter. I know what it's supposed to feel like. I know what it's supposed to look like, and this is perfect. So this one I'm making into a quote-unquote traditional style loaf, like a loaf you would buy at the grocery store that you would slice up. It's kind of that rectangular shape, and then the traditional loaf that's like unflavored. It's just like a traditional white bread. I'm actually making that in a round loaf, and I think these both turned out so beautiful. You're going to see at the end. But again, I kind of fold it like an envelope or in four. It was told an envelope, but now that I'm looking at it, I can't see the envelope. So <laughs> anyways, and I kind of roll this one up into a ball and kind of pinch it under. You can also do a second rise if you want to. It's totally not necessary because it's ready to go. And then all I'm going to do is pat it a little bit because I think it's fun. <laughs> You don't have to do this because you are going to plop it into the pan. But these are looking so good already, and I love the way that my kitchen smells when I'm making yeasty breads, even though I don't enjoy it anymore. I know what this bread tastes like. I ate it every single day during our debt payoff journey, I feel like. We always made it. I make it now for my husband. So once my oven's preheated, I go ahead and take my pans out. And for this one, I'm doing a lid with another bread pan. It's great. It worked for me for almost a year when I was making this bread, and I didn't have a Dutch oven pop it in the oven for 30 minutes, then take the lid, lid off for an additional 15. And then go ahead with this one, I'm gonna put it in a glass baking dish just to show a different method. And then you're gonna cover it with just a piece of aluminum foil. It doesn't have to be on there tight or anything. You just kinda make sure it's a little bit on there so it can kinda steam a little bit like a lid. Put, pop that in there for 30 minutes. And then 30 minutes later, you're gonna take them out, take the lids off, put them back in for 15 minutes. If you have not made this bread, you are missing out. You need to make it ASAP. Ooh, so pretty. Look how perfect. I love this split right here. It makes me so happy. I love the little dusting of flour. So here's my traditional loaf, and here's my round loaf. As you can see, this one is a little bit crispier already, but no need to worry. They're gonna go back in for 15 minutes and get nice and crispy on the top, and then they're gonna fully cool and be ready to eat. Let me know in a comment below, are you so excited to get into your kitchen and start baking bread? If you guys haven't seen the pull apart pizza bread that Kale Junkie shared not too long ago, I highly recommend trying it. That's what I made the round loaf with. I made a pizza bread for my neighbors and they loved it. It was a huge hit. They had a party the other night. It was awesome. So I highly recommend giving that a try. It would be a great dinner. You could stuff it with whatever the heck you wanted. This bread is such a cheap way to make any meal more elegant, so I hope you start adding it onto your meals. Well, uh, no makeup, glasses, and it's early in the morning. And I don't normally show up on YouTube like this, but you guys are my best friends. What can I say? We're gonna make some veggie broth with the scraps that I have been saving for the past week. This is about a perfect amount to put in my crock pot, so I'm gonna share with you what I do. Sometimes you do crock pot method. I have as of recently, sometimes I do stove top, but honestly the crock pot method is really nice because I can just set it in there and forget about it. Come back six hours later, perfect broth. First, thank you so much for letting me feel open to come on here as my real raw self. Wet hair, glasses, no makeup. Second, if you make any snarky comment about it, you can't be my best friend anymore. <laughs> I know none of us get into the kitchen camera ready every single time we come into our kitchen, but it feels very vulnerable to do so here on YouTube.